Hey, what's up, everybody? In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a pair cam and uh, we're going to be attaching that to the axle. We're going to be taking our follower rod and pad. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be sliding down through this hole, all right? And then they're going to be connected using something called transitional constraint. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first go ahead and just sort of make this uh, up here as its own little sub assembly. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to be using uh, constraint. I'm going to be using insert, and I'm just going to insert this peg uh, into this hole. All right. And if we're taking a look at this and we can see if there's a gap, then obviously we can go ahead and change up the solution on it. Okay, looking at the backside, we can see that's good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and cancel. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it there for right now. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is start working on getting our pair cam onto this axle. So in order to do this, what I'm probably going to do is just turn visibility off on a wheel just so we can see the end of this axle. So if at any point in time you need to find something over in the browser, you just simply pick on it. Now you can scroll up and down the browser and we can see that, that wheel is right here. All right, with the blue highlight, we can right click and just uncheck visibility. And now that's gone. It's not gone for good. It just means that the visibility of that has just been turned off. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next is using constrain, we're going to come in and use our mate type. We're going to come right here to the center of our pair cam hole. Okay, we see that axle. I'm sorry, axis. And then now we're going to come, come over here to the actual axle itself. We can see the axis going through the center of it. So I'm going to pick on that and we can see how it just slides right on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and cancel out. So right now our pair cam is able to slide down through this. All right, I want this to be able to be connected okay, to the actual axle. So in order to do that, I'm going to be double clicking on the actual pair cam. Okay, we can see that this is where the pair cam is down here. We can see that that's gone white. Everything else is gray. All right, so now we're just talking to the IPT. Now I'm going to come down and go into my origin folder. And I'm going to be looking for a plane that's going to be going right down the center of it, just like that. Just like that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and turn visibility on. Okay. The other thing I'm going to be doing is looking for this plane that goes right through the center of this. Okay, and when we're looking at that, we can see it's right down the center of it. And that is only going to happen, right, is when you go to do your original extrusion, you have to make sure to do a symmetrical extrusion. So if we come back and right click and edit the feature on this, we can see when I went to make the extrusion, it was symmetrical. That's why I said in the, vid the original video tutorial, and that's the exact reason now that that plane is going to be there for us to use. So I'm going to go find that plane, which is going to be here. I'm going to go ahead and just turn the visibility on. Okay, I'm done modifying the part, so I'm going to go ahead and hit return to go back into the assembly. And now I can go ahead and start getting things started. Okay, so now that is ready to uh, be attached to the axle. We can go to constraint. We're going to be using the mate type. I'm going to be coming in and finding this work plane right here. And then finding this work plane right here. All right, and either we have a mate or a flush solution, we can see how we can flip flop it. it does not matter in my case. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and cancel out. This is still able to move down, but if I came here to the end, I grab the shaft collar, we can see that those are now working together. Okay, so that's done. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, go to constrain using my mate type. I'm gonna be coming in and looking for this axis that goes down through this cylinder, this follower rod and then come over here and go to the center of the hole and find that axis. I can see the pad is at the bottom. If it is not, you can always change the solution of this, okay, to get it where you want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and then just cancel out. All right, so right now the pad and the, uh, the axle or the follower rod are definitely not working together. So I'm going to double click on this pad, come here to my origin. I'm gonna find a plane that goes through it like that or like that, does not matter. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and turn the visibility on. I'm gonna return back to the assembly. I'm now going to come here to my follow rod, double click on that to make it active, come to my origin, and I'm gonna be looking for a plane that's gonna go right down through the center of it, just like that or that, okay, and turn one of those on. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and return back to this. And now using constrain, use the mate type, I'm gonna come and find this work plane and pick on this work plane. All right, that's brought them together. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and cancel out. Now we can see that those are spinning together, but they're also able to slide down through that hole. Okay, so now I have a plane here I can use and there's a plane going through the center of the cam. So let's go to constraint, go to mate type, 
pick on the actual work plane itself, and then pick on the other work plane. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to bring those together okay, on that plane. So it's going to be sitting directly on top of it now. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. In order to finish all this up, we're now going to come out here, go to constraint, our transitional constraint. And I'm just going to be picking the top of my pair cam, flipping this over and looking at the bottom and finding that pad at the follower ride. And for some reason, it didn't like it that first time. Let's try it again. Let's go to constraint, go to transitional. You can see how I've spun this just a little bit. So if you'd like to do that, go ahead. Constrain, transitional. I'm going to grab this face, flip this over. Instead of maybe grabbing this part, if you're seeing it's going green and nothing's happening, it means it's not going to work. What I've found out is if you go to transitional and get to the end of the actual follower rod, and now go to the surface of the cam, it sometimes likes to work just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and cancel. All right. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is just go and turn that wheel back on that we uh, turned off earlier. I'll turn that on by picking on visibility. Okay, and now we can see if this is going to work for us or not just by grabbing a hold of this wheel. Okay, and now we can see that that pair cam, okay, and that follower rod are working together. All right, it's doing great. Last part of this would be putting the topper on top of that. Okay, so I can go out and go to constraint, insert. Okay, I'll be flipping this over, looking at the inside of the hole, down at the bottom of the hole, I'm gonna pick on that, flip this over and look at the top of the follower. Okay, we can see how that went in together. We're gonna go ahead and hit apply. Okay, now the thing is, is that this is able to spin independently, okay, from this. And they're gonna be glued together in real life. So let's just come out here and fix that. Double clicking on the topper. Now we can come down into our origin. We can find a plane that's going right down through the center of it. I like the way that looks. I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility on and return back. Now this is when I can use my mate constraint and put a mate constraint between this work plane and this work plane. I can go ahead and hit apply, cancel out. And now when I sit back and look at this, we can see that that is working. Okay, let's see if we can't get an animation of this. All right, so what we'd have to do is use constraint, angle constraint, the first solution. Okay, come here to the work plane going down through the wheel. If it's not there, remember, you can always double click on the wheel. Okay, go to origin. Okay, and turn on a plane that's going to be going right down through the center of it. I'm going to return back to the assembly. Go to my constraint, angular constraint, first solution. I'm going to be picking on this plane and then picking on the top of this box here hitting apply. Okay, now if I pick on the wheel, we can see where it's at in the browser. You're going to now see that there's an angular constraint. If we right click on that and hit drive, now we can see our starting point is going to be at zero. We want this to go two full revolutions at 720. Okay, and now I can go ahead and hit the button. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's a lot of math for that to crunch. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. We can always just right click and delete the angle constraint. And now we can go ahead and just spin this with our mouse manually and we can see if that's actually working. All right, so there you go. That is how we apply a transitional constraint between a follower and a pair cam for the pull toy project.